Well, I'm back here in the studio, and while well, it's been a while, I have my full review ready for you on the MSR Hubba Tour 2. since the video apologize family stuff enough said that said I've actually been using the Hubba Tour 2 now uh, I've used it for a few overnight stays one this past weekend actually I did a full back bike packing tour uh, over three days and used this tent as my primary tent and I will honestly tell you what I think the big benefits and the big costs to going to this specific series now for basically full uh, information, I have had an MSR Hubba Hubba before. That's their two-person backpacking tent. It is a lighter tent. It's more of a three-season tent. This one's what I would kind of consider that in between a three, I would say a three, four season. It's not really a full three season. It's not really a full four season. It kind of hits that bike packing adventure type area where you're not really going back, you know, you're not going in the mid and the negative 20 degrees, but you're also not probably doing it in the 100 degree heat. Um, this is going to kind of fit that whole mid scaping. And the reason I say that is there's not going to be as much mesh built into this tent for as much airflow as you would get in like a, bike, a backpacking, a three season backpacking tent. Um, so that was actually one nice thing that I, I, I do like about this because I typically don't do the heavy bikepacking adventures in the extreme heat. I like to do it in the cooler weather. I also typically don't do it in the middle of winter. Um, not saying that you couldn't use this in the middle of winter um, because it, it actually kept me very warm uh, even on the nights where it got to 50 degrees or so. Plenty warm inside the tent. Uh, so that was awesome. Um, it is also is a two-person tent. Um, unlike traditional backpacking or three season tents or any type of dual layer tent, not a single layer tent where you have the tent, you have a rain fly that goes over uh, the top of that tent to obviously shed the moisture. So you do have that air gap that helps that air circulation. Uh, this one, the, the rain fly is attached to the tent. Uh, so splitting the weight, uh, between you and maybe another person, uh, like if you were doing this as a two-person team and actually using this as a two-person tent for that purpose, it's going to be harder to split the weight. The tent is kind of one big mess. And then you have the poles and the stakes. Um, and if you've watched my setup video, and I will link that in a card as well as below, um, you will see how it actually goes together. Now, there is a benefit in a and why they designed it that way the the actual tent poles are on the outside of the rain fly they're not in between the tent material and the rain fly and that's because you can set this up in the rain and not worry about the inside of the tent getting wet because the rain fly is actually on the outside and it's essentially it's the poles the rain fly attaches to the poles which are suspended and then there's actually um lines that go between the actual uh, rain fly and the inner tent so that they are separated still you still have that air gap but as you're setting it up even if it's raining unless it's a really driving rain and a lot of moisture on the ground the inside of the tent's going to basically stay dry so one of the big benefits of this is they thought of that bike packing crowd you don't know when you're going to stop to start setting up camp you don't know what's going to happen the other big benefit of this and that if you've if you've ever looked into this tent at all, it's not a just standard small tent, two person tent with maybe two small or one small vestibule for shoes. And then you either keep some of the stuff in the tent with you, you keep some of the stuff out of the tent and you can pack whatever you can maybe in that small vestibule. This has basically an attached gear shed. You can get all of your gear in there. You could even put your bikes in there. So if you were worried about your bikes getting wet or damaged or anything like that, or you're just worried about security, you could take the front wheel off, stick it in the gear shed with you. Um, it's essentially a part of the tent and it's part of the rain fly. Uh, the main tent, the actual inner part, the actual structure that you sleep in that keeps the bugs out is separate 
but the rain fly continues all the way out to do this big gear shed, which has a pole of its own and is not self-standing. You have to stake or guy it out. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind as well. While this is a freestanding tent, it really isn't because you do have to use guide points and you do have to use stakes to pull that gear shed in, t in, uh, in tension. Um, so that's one thing. If you watch the setup video, you'll actually see that as well. Um, the gear shed is, is awesome. Actually, that's the reason I brought this tent is because I had pannier bags, I had a trunk bag, I had um, uh, my handlebar bags, uh, I had my backpack, I had all my stuff that I had with me. Uh, I, have, I use a hydration back, I know that a lot of people don't, but I do, I love it. Um, I kept that all outside of my tent. I kept that all in the gear shed and in my tent was me, my sleeping bag, my sleeping pad, my electronics, like my cell phone, my, my watch and my chargers and stuff like that, and my camera. All that was in the tent with me. Um, everything else was in the gear shed. It didn't matter if it rained, didn't matter whatever, because the gear shed actually does have a partial floor too. So in the middle between the tent and the far part of the gear shed is exposed ground. That's where you're gonna walk, that's where you're gonna throw your shoes and stuff. The one part of the gear shed actually has its own floor. So if you, like in my case, I took my panniers off, I threw them in the corner. I took all my, bu my bike bags, threw them in the corner. Uh, my clothing, I threw it in the corner, all of that went in the corner of the gear shed on an actual floor. So one big bonus to this tent is that it has that gear shed and it also has a floor in that gear shed for that said gear. So if it starts storming like crazy, even if you get some water that's coming down below, it's not gonna get soaked into your gear that you have on that floor. So that's a huge benefit to me. Uh, I do not have the footprint to this. This last weekend, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take the, the footprint from my hubba hubba and see if it actually fits it. It doesn't, the short of it. And essentially, I, I believe it actually doesn't because it does actually, basically the, the floor dimensions are almost identical, but the pole locations are different because my hubba hubba, the pole locations are in between the rain fly and the tent. On the hubba tour, the pole locations are on the outside of the tent. So it actually is a slightly larger tent pole design but the interior measurements are about the same to be honest now of course they made some improvements on the synthetic materials that this is made out of they also made improvements in terms of uh the things inside the tent so even comfort features like uh storage above you there are a couple little pockets that's directly in the middle of the tent that you can just maybe jam your wallet up there or whatever put a light so it's facing down i actually hung on one of my small headlights in the tent um so it made it really nice but all in all, the big thing about this tent, I think the one downside, in my opinion, I'll, I'll, I'll give it two downsides. One, you have to stake or guide out, which is, always, to, in my eyes, I'm a freestanding tent kind of person. I like to be able to just top pop it up and it's good to go. And maybe just the vestibules. And that's essentially what this is. It's the same thing, but the gear shed is not just a vestibule. The gear shed does need to be pulled out because that's your primary door into the tent. Now it does have a secondary access on the backside, with basically this little vestibule. I have a hard time calling it a vestibule because it, it's just gaining airspace. It's really not useful for anything other than just airspace. Uh, not enough space to put anything in there really. Everything's in the gear shed. Um, that's that's one of my downsides is, is that it has to be staked out because the gear shed, like I said, is your primary entrance. The second downside, and this is one of those things that without spending another $300 because they'll add whatever and they'll take away whatever, uh, is the weight, of course. I mean, this is not your ultra light backpacking tent. It has a gear shed for all that matters. Now this is aimed at the bike packing crowd. So you're putting it on your bike. You're not carrying it on your back. Now I understand that every pound still counts even when you're pedaling it, but pedaling it is way different than carrying it on your back. So I did this for myself. I, this is, I, I, everybody had their own tent. I had my own tent. This is the tent I decided to take with me uh, because it's designed for bikepacking and the gear shed was awesome. Um, they do offer this in different sizes too. The Hubba Tour 2 just gives, even with a single person in there, it just gives you plenty of room. I mean, the one thing that I like to do when I get there is relax. And I can relax in a two-person tent a lot more than I can relax in a one-person tent generally. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you if weight savings and you're going by yourself and you know you're going to have your own tent, check out the Hubba Tour 1. Um, but that said, uh, as with any MSR tent, I love the bag. The stuff bags are awesome. I love the included, um, or I should say that I love the side loaded access to the stuff bag first. 
Uh, I like, I've always been a big fan of the MSR's tent stakes. They're very simple, they're very lightweight, nice and full of dirt yet. Um, you can get their groundhog stakes, which are a little more robust but a little heavier as well. So I have nothing but great things to say about this tent. The poles are light, their pole bag is you know is great you don't have to take the bags you don't have to take any of these bags if you you know you can stuff this in your pannier or whatever um it's a great tent i honestly would recommend anybody that's looking uh specifically at bike packing or in, or in any kind of adventure sport where you want a storage area within the tent itself um i highly recommend looking at this tent because this tent is awesome uh from if you've watched my review on my hubba hubba which I did a long time ago. Um, I love that tent. I, I really do. That tent is a perfect tent. It really is. And they made it better with the NX, and I never got that one because the Hubba Hubba was everything I wanted. The Hubba Tour is replacing that tent because I've actually, I use stuff. I bring stuff with me, and I'd rather have it in the tent with me, and but not in the tent with me. So the the gear shed is is worth every, its weight, in my opinion. So you can pull up all the information on this specific MSR tent. I will put a link, like I said below, to the MSR tent website. It's going to tell you all the weight. Like this is five pounds four ounces. Uh, retail is about six fifty. They do make a one person version. They also make a three person version. Basically, you add or subtract a hundred bucks, and that's what's going to cost you for this specific tent. Um, I have nothing but great things to say about it for the most part. Like I said, there's a couple things about it, but I love the pockets. I love the design. I love everything about it. I think I'm going to have to get the footprint for it because I am a huge believer in the footprint. Now, the other thing is, like I, 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 I didn't bring up, I guess, yet, is they do have a new coating. Now, maybe you've watched my videos here in the past on my Hubba Hubba. Um, I did have to have the Rainfly replaced on that tent. Now, that tent... I bought in 2005. Um, I love that tent. Like I said, I didn't use it all that much, to be honest about it. But over its time, a ultralight tent, the coating that makes it waterproof, does eventually start to degrade. That's just the nature of coatings. Um, that tent, the coating degraded. MSR replaced the 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 uh, the rain flat. MSR stands behind their products. They really do. They give you a really good warranty on them. They want you to make sure that as long as you take care of your tent and if something like that happens, they're going to stand behind it. Now, the new coating they have on this, um, they're extreme durable. I think they actually have a specific name for it that I'm not thinking of right now. Uh, extreme Shield Coating. It lasts three times longer than the older stuff did. Um, and they've done an amazing allotment of tests on it. They do. Uh, MSR is kind of known for their extreme tests. And they do a really good job at it. If you actually, they, I think they actually have some videos on their YouTube channel showing you the new extreme coating that they brought out with this tent. And I'm sure they're going to bring that. And they may already have started into all their other series eventually too. Because it's a coating that lasts a lot longer. So you're talking, in my case, I think that was replaced after 12, 10 or 12 years? 12 years I think I had it? Uh, 10 years. I think it was 10 or 11 years. They replaced it. So we're talking like 30 years. That's awesome. That makes you a little happier because, uh, of course, when that, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen and then MSR stood behind it. So, um, hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please post those below in the comment section. Subscribe, share, and like this video. If you could, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'd love to show put this out there a little bit better. I will put links, like I said, to where you can find out information on this tent as well as the other two sizes of this tent. If you want to purchase it, I will put links below where you can purchase it. If you want to purchase through those links, you are supporting the program here, and I highly appreciate it. I really do. Uh, that said, guys, check us out, campgeeks.com. Kind of actually in a flux on the website, so it's not fully up to date, but you can reach me through it. So uh, if you're looking, if you have questions direct, or if you're looking to have a product shown here, campgeeks.com. Let me know. Uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you on a future review here on Camp Geeks. And I have a bunch of them coming, just so you know. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you soon.